Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to explore a challenging problem from an Oxford University admission test. Let's see how we crack it. So, the problem is, we have a square with side length 1, and inside this square there's an irregular hexagon, where all six sides of the hexagon have equal length. Our goal is to find the length of one side of the hexagon. Now, let's drive in to find it. So, first of all, let me draw the square first. Each side of the square has length 1. Now, let's draw a hexagon inside the square. Here's something important to understand. In the question, we are given that this is an irregular hexagon. Did you know what does that mean? Well, in a regular hexagon, everything is perfectly uniform. All the sides are equal. And all the angles are equal too. It's perfectly symmetrical. But an irregular hexagon, it is different. The angles can be of different sizes. They don't all have to match. Look at our hexagon here. You can see the angles are not all the same. However, key part is that problem specifically tells us that all the sides are still equal in length. So, even though the angles are different, but every single side of this hexagon has the exact same length. Let's say this length as x. So, this side is also x. And so on, all six sides equal x. All right, now let's look at the top right corner of our square. Do you see it? There's a right triangle formed right there, in that corner. This is actually perfect for us because we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve this problem. But first, we need to figure out the lengths of all three sides of this triangle. Let's know what we have. One of the sides is actually a side of our hexagon, so that has length x. That's what we're trying to find. But what about the other two sides? Well, let's think about this carefully. Look at the top side of our square. We know the entire side has length 1, right? But notice, this side is taken up by the hexagon, and it has length x. So what's left? If the whole side is 1, and we subtract the part that's x, we get 1 minus x. That's the length of this piece right here. Now, the same exact logic applies to the right side of the square. The total length of the right side is 1. The hexagon takes up a length of x. So the remaining part is, again, 1 minus x. Perfect. So the right triangle has sides of length x, x minus 1, and x minus 1. Now we can use the Pythagorean theorem. The square of the length of the hypotenuse, the side opposite the right angle, is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the other two sides, legs. a square plus b square equal c square, where a and b are the two legs of the right triangle and c is the hypotenuse. So let's apply this to our triangle. First, we need to identify which side is the hypotenuse. Remember, it's the side across from the right angle. In our case, that's the side with length x the hexagon's side. And what are the two legs? Well, we just figured those out. They're both 1 minus x. Now, we can write our equation as we take the first leg, which is 1 minus x, and square it. Then, we add the second leg also, that is 1 minus x squared. And that equals the hypotenuse squared, which is x squared. So our equation becomes 1 minus x whole square plus 1 minus x whole square equal x square. Now, we are going to solve this equation for x. We just need to solve this equation for x and we'll have our answer. All right, now let's expand the left side of our equation. We need to expand 1 minus x whole square. Now, what does 1 minus x whole square actually mean? It means we're multiplying 1 minus x by itself. So we have 1 minus x times 1 minus x. To multiply these brackets, we're going to use the FOIL method. Did you know the FOIL method? In FOIL method, we multiply every term in the first bracket by every term in the second bracket. Let's do this step by step. Look, this one is multiply with this term, and that is 1. 1 times 1 equals 1. 
multiply this one with the second term, and it becomes 1 times minus x equals minus x. Now, multiply the second term with the first term. That is, minus x times 1 equals minus x. Now, multiply minus x with minus x. Remember, negative times negative gives us a positive. So, we get positive x squared. Let's add all of these together. So, 1 minus x whole square equal 1 minus 2x plus x square. Great, but remember, on the left side of our original equation, we have 1 minus x whole square appearing twice. So, we need to add this result to itself. 1 minus 2x plus x squared plus 1 minus 2x plus x squared equals x squared. Oh, perfect. We're ready to simplify this further. Okay, now, we need to combine the like terms on the left side. Let me show you how we organize this. We're going to group the terms that are similar, like the x squared terms, the x terms, and the constant numbers. Let's start with the x squared terms. We have x squared plus x squared, which gives us 2x squared. Next, let's look at the x terms. We have minus 2x and another minus 2x. So that's negative 2x plus negative 2x, which equals negative 4x. And finally, the constant terms, the numbers, without any x. We have 1 plus 1, which equal 2. So, when we put it all together, our equation becomes 2x squared minus 4x plus 2 equal x squared. Now, we want to get every term on one side of the equation. So, for this, we subtract x squared from both sides. Now look at the left side. Here we have 2x squared minus x squared which gives us just x squared. On the right side, we have x squared minus x squared. They just cancel each other, and we get 0. So our equation becomes x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals 0. All right, it's time to use the quadratic formula. If you remember, for any equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, we can find x by using this formula. x equal minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. By putting these values, we get this nice quadratic equation. Now, I'm not going to bore you by solving this quadratic equation. By solving this, we get the result x equal 4 plus minus square root of 8 divided by 2. Great, we're making progress. But, notice this plus minus symbols. This means we actually have two possible solutions here. The first solution, let's call it x1. If we use the plus sign, x1 equal 4 plus square root of 8 over 2. And our second solution, let's call it x2, equal 4 minus square root of 8 over 2. And here's the problem. We have two mathematical solutions but we can only pick one. Remember, we're looking for the length of the hexagon's side, which is the real physical length inside our square. So both of these cannot be right. Let's check which one actually makes sense for our problem. We're going to start by checking the first solution. That is, x1 equal 4 plus square root of 8 over 2. Now, we need to figure out if this makes sense. Let's calculate what this actually equals. Look at this square root of 8. What's that approximately equal? Well, it's a bit less than the square root of 9, which is 3. So the square root of 8 is approximately 2.83. So we have 4 plus 3.83, which equals 6.83. And then we divide that by 2, and it equals approximately 3.4. Oh, wait a minute, 3.4. Our entire square has sides of length one. So 
how could the hexagon, which fits inside the square, have a side length of 3.4? That is more than three times bigger than the square itself, so it doesn't make any sense at all. The hexagon can't be bigger than the square it's sitting inside. Therefore, x1 is not valid. So we throw this solution out. That means our answer must be x2. All right, now let's work with our second solution. That is x2 equal four minus square root of eight over two. By solving this, we get x2 equal two minus square root of two. And there we have our final answer that the length of one side of the hexagon is two minus the square root of two. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found something interesting, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more.